Welcome to class. I'm Trevor, and on this channel I chat all things D&D. In this video, I'm going to go over some ideas for plot hooks for your next D&D or TTRPG game. Now, these are going to be inspired by Magic the Gathering cards, but even if you don't know anything about Magic, I would certainly stay tuned. You don't need to know about Magic to take inspiration from the name or artwork of the cards. In case you don't know, on my TikTok, I'll pretty frequently post improvisational videos where I'll randomly generate a magic card and talk about how I use that as inspiration for something in 5th edition, whether it's a plot hook, an NPC, a magic item, anything I can think of. This video is going to be a longer form version of that, but really the process is the important thing. You can get inspiration for a 5th edition game or other TTRPG game from anywhere. I've gotten inspiration from classic literature and short stories and poetry and movies. They're great. Whatever you can think of. I play Magic, I use that as inspiration. A lot of the time because my players don't, so they don't know what I'm pulling from. I think being able to adapt and adjust is at the core of TTRPG games, and that's not just for players, it's also for the DM experience. So let's talk about a cycle of five cards from Streets of New Capenna and how I use them as possible plot hooks in any kind of TTRPG game. This cycle of five cards from Streets of New Capenna all have the hideaway mechanic. You don't really need to know what that means, except that there is an unequal distribution of information. The first of the cycle is called Rabble Rousing. Now, Rabble Rousing is a sort of civilian uprising. The interesting thing about this is it can take place in any genre at any time period. The term might be dated, but the meaning behind it it, it, it spans beyond time. It's kind of just part of the human condition. Let's say your players come back from a mission and they are, one of them or all of them are at a tavern and they overhear some town gossip. It could be someone talking about wanting to overthrow their boss or overthrow the king or whatever. It depends on the world that your game takes place in. Your players might intervene then or they might wait. And when they come back, maybe things have escalated. And depending on how long they were gone, it could have escalated quite a bit. There are a lot of like levers and knobs to adjust here, but I think this card could be a really cool inspiration for a game that has a lot of intrigue, especially political intrigue. The next card in the cycle is called Wiretapping, and you got a couple of different options here. What if there is a group of wizards that is scrying, in a sense, on all uses of the message or sending spell? So they're harvesting information that way. Maybe they're selling it in the black market or something like that. Alternatively, your players could have received or purchased sending stones that are bugged and they don't realize this. The information could be going to the BBEG or to a third party, or it could create another kind of evil character that they have to fight against. Or you could borrow from something like, say, 1984, spoilers for 1984 if you haven't read that classic novel, and your players could have a safe house that isn't actually safe. Now, if your players are suspicious and they investigate the room and they roll a high enough check, they would find something like this. But if not, maybe they're lulled into a false sense of security, this could kind of be their undoing. And the BBEG could be getting information every time the players return back to the base that they feel is safe when in reality it's not. The next card in this cycle is called Cemetery Tampering. And though I do think this is the easiest one to naturally incorporate into a fifth edition game, that still doesn't limit the amount of plot hooks you could use from it. Maybe the PCs are called upon by a gravekeeper, and the gravekeeper is just completely overwhelmed because the grave sites are being disturbed and bodies are being taken. Now, the reason for it could be a necromancer, or it could be someone harvesting and selling organs. What if an individual goes to a graveyard and comes then to the party and, and is just out of sorts because their loved one is no longer buried there? There are a lot of options here, both for how the like plot hook comes about and why the bodies are missing. But I think that any kind of like, especially if you like zombies, any kind of cemetery or graveyard based shenanigans really work well, especially in more kind of traditional fifth edition style adventures. The next card that we have is Widespread Thieving. This one is somewhat similar to Rabble Rousing, but I don't think it has to be. You could have a underground organization, a thieves guild would work perfect here, that finally bubbles up to the surface and robs a bank or a museum or what have you. And depending on where your players are aligned and the reason for this robbery, this all plays out differently. Maybe your players think that the robbers, the thieves, are doing this with just cause. 
there's a lot of nuance to something like this. Now, obviously, in the art that's pictured here, the card implies that like gold and art and like fine jewelry is what's being stolen, but maybe that's being done so people can feed their families. I don't know. I've always liked kind of morally gray situations, but I'm always the DM. And I understand that like even my players, they're not as big of fans of that. They want it to be more cut and dry. That varies from table to table. So whatever you think your players would like best, but I do think that an event like this would be really fun to incorporate in a fifth edition game. And finally, we have fight rigging. I have a soft spot for this one because I've always really enjoyed having fighting pits in my towns, but this takes what's normally just kind of a combat encounter in a normally like social role-playing style area and builds a plot around it. Let's say your players are like participating in this fighting pit or even just observing it and someone is quickly rising through the ranks and is pretty suspicious. Alternatively, let's say they're participating in the fights, but they're given the opportunity to cheat. Would they take up that opportunity? What are the risks of taking up that opportunity? Do they get kicked out of the fight club or do they get kicked out of the town altogether? Separate from those things, who is rigging the fights? Is it a corrupt bookie? Is it a government official who's trying to get more money to get more power? I really like this because I think it lets something that is normally just, at least the way I run it, a like fun downtime, like let's roll initiative and have a fun fight. And it turns it into more of a plot that can be tied to a larger overall story. So those are five plot hooks inspired by Magic the Gathering cards. If you'd handle any of these scenarios differently, let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this kind of content where I take other material and then talk about how I would use it as a jumping off point to inspire fifth edition games, please subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. It really would mean the world. If you have suggestions for other areas to get inspiration or anything you're struggling with when it comes to running your D&D games, I'd love to help you out there too. But as I always say, be safe. Make smart life choices.